The South is enamored of her new work. Her soul is stirred with the breath of new life. The light of a grander day is falling fair on her face. She is thrilling with the consciousness of growing power and prosperity. As she stands upright, full statured, and equal among the people of the earth, breathing the keen air and looking out upon the expanding horizon, she understands that her emancipation came because of the inscrutable wisdom of God. Her honest purpose was crossed and her brave armies were beaten. Grady believed that the Civil War was a cordial war in which the North and South both fought fiercely for their beliefs, but in the end, the South realized that it was lost. Grady's optimism was not realistic in many areas of the Deep South due to hostile race relations and limited economic opportunities for African Americans. These issues were present in Pleasant Hill, a predominantly black neighborhood in Macon, Georgia. The Pleasant Hill neighborhood was originally just outside of Macon City boundaries. However, a proposition to incorporate Pleasant Hills into the Macon City limits was raised, but it was met with eager opposition from the African American community that lived there. They sent a committee to Atlanta and even hired an attorney to try to stop Pleasant Hills annexation. These African Americans so strongly opposed being annexed into city limits for financial purposes. The people living in this community could not afford the raise in taxes that would come with living inside city limits. They would also be forced to sell their animals, and many of them depended on cows and hogs. This situation reflects African Americans' economic condition at this time. That they seemed to be able to manage within city taxes and were able to help support themselves using animals, their finances were unstable. An increase in taxes and removal of animals would economically devastate them, showing that they were extremely poor in scale to other citizens of Macon. In September of 1895, Jim Holt's house was burned down in Pleasant Hill. Theories formed among the African American residents that some of the whites in the area had burned down the house. Often occurs in the Pleasant Hill neighborhood and was thought to be intentional racial violence. People suspected that whites were burning down houses of African American residents as a way of displaying white supremacy. Later in the same month of September, some of the residents of Pleasant Hill gathered to create their own fire department to attempt to stop these fires. The development of a fire department only partly resolved the issue of the fires at the time. Sarah Thomas, a black woman living in Pleasant Hill in 1895, established a new industrial school for blacks. The school taught the boys how to use a saw, hammer, and plow, while the girls learned how to cook and sew. The working class participated in heavy labor and industry-focused jobs. While literacy was still an issue for both races, Whites had a 12% illiterate rate, while blacks had a 50% illiterate rate. Low social mobility for blacks meant that a formal education did not present a huge advantage, so many African Americans decided to forego this education in favor of teaching skilled labor. Although race relations in Macon were less than cordial, some African Americans and whites came together to worship. Blacks and whites were publicly seen dining together, worshiping, and even washing one another's feet. This group, members of what they refer to as the Invisible Church, was an extension of Northern missionaries who sought to break down racial barriers in religion in the name of Christianity. In Pleasant Hill, the branch was particularly small, having only one Caucasian member, but still attracted the attention of other religious zealots from Atlanta and local news sources. Much of the neighborhood was destroyed in the construction of the interstate system. Today, the neighborhood is still very impoverished, and many houses are still burned, run down, or vacated altogether.